So let's add some animation. Here's the cherry bitmap that we placed on the front of our device application. And we're going to make this move. And that means we need to update its X and Y coordinates. So if we go into our layout class, and if we go to the top inside the constructor, I'm just going to define the speed at which we're going to change those coordinates. So in the X direction, I want to advance one pixel each cycle. Oh, let's declare the integers here at the top. So int, we're going to have one for the X direction, and we're going to have one for the Y direction. So we've got our X direction as one pixel, and I'm going to say one pixel for the Y direction. And if we scroll down to the point just before we draw the bitmap, we can update our locations. So we can say cherry x is equal to cherry x plus x direction. And the same for the y direction. Now if we hit save and run, and we go straight into the animation class, it's a big disappointment. The bitmap has actually moved. It's moved one pixel to the right and one pixel down, and it's stopped there. Why? Why has it done this? So if we go back into our activity animation, this update of the X and Y location happens at the very end of on draw. An Android, once it's drawn the bitmap, it doesn't know we want to redraw the bitmap again and again. It is satisfied that this member method has run correctly. So you have to trick it into running again and again. And we do this by typing in invalidate at the very end. And it clears everything that's been done in this method and Android repeats itself. The X and Y coordinates, though, do remember their values, so they can be incremented. Let's hit save and run. Let's go straight into the animation class. And there is our cherry moving. It's amazing. It really is pretty cool, isn't it? And it's gone. Uh, it's gone. It's gone off the screen. An Android doesn't draw. Once the coordinates are off the screen, it doesn't continue to draw. Uh, but it's not ideal and we'd like to keep it on the screen. And I'll show you how to detect borders in the next tutorial.